what experts had warned against decades ago has become a reality today. A 13-year drought has hit the country, bringing water levels to a historic low. Chile has declared a state of disaster in several central and southern regions after a heat wave. Water is running scarce in Chile as the country has entered the 13th year of record breaking. The water situation in the country is critical because today we are seeing the impacts that were predicted. Rainfall has slumped ago. and temperatures continue to rise. Now there is no water. It is a desert here. Animals are dying. Fast-spreading fires burn everything in their path. Forest, farms and homes. 2,300 firefighters have been deployed. The civilians have died trying to flee in cars from the smoke. At least two were left off We have to prepare for there to not be enough water for everyone who lives here. I, I think because I have a strong connection with the ocean, since I'm a child. My granddad, my uncles and aunties from the side of my mom, everybody have been in connection with the sea. My granddad is fisherman, and a lot of my aunties are collectors of algae in Chile. Then, since I'm a child, I have been surrounded with water. I have that connection, I think, and with the animals as well. It's mm -hmm. like, I love to see the swans coming and then it's like, they watching you outside of the window and they asking you for food. And I think it's quite nice. Yeah, because it's like most of people live in a flat or live in a house and you go outside and you have the roads and the sideway. We go outside and we have water. We are basically living in something that is alive. I think the boat gives this kind of sensation that you are moving permanently. And it's like feeling as uh, you are a baby inside of the boat yeah. and your mother is the water. We are both uh, environmental activists there. So we work uh, with communities. We try to stop um, projects that are not properly designed, thinking in the communities and in the environment. Um, we are both professionals of there. In Chile, you can buy a river. So basically, rivers are can be a, a private property, so you can buy the water of the river. You can buy the complete river, basically. So they are cutting the rivers that before the, all of the fruit uh, were feeding a lot of communities and keeping them alive. Now uh, the private industry uh, buy the river and only use it for the fruit and the people are getting without water. Where we live, uh, water is not a big problem yet because we live quite into the south of the country. So during the winter we still have a lot of precipitation and it's not a big problem where we live. But if you go a few hundreds of kilometers to the north, which in Chile is not much because Chile mm -hmm. is really long, uh, you can see that problems and really big problems are starting because you have really big communities that are just at the edge of being without water. I have one week and a half of holidays that I was with my mom fighting with my and my family and friends of my mom fighting the fires. One to one I could show you some photos. It was like super stressful. It took me almost two weeks to fully recover when I arrived here. I, two days I fully sleep. It's like kind of a stressful situations that you are not used to you are yeah. not used to live, um, and it's so sad because my mom have a native forest. She protect the native mm -hmm. forest. We call her the fairy of the forest. You try to protect a little part of native forest, and you want to protect. My mom is very into protect water, the forest, mm -hmm. and work with the communities and everything. But in surrounding, you have like a massive industry of pines and eucalypts that it's impossible to fight. Mm -hmm. And I think this kind of treatment to people and treatment to the nature, as you say, is like, we don't like to discuss too much about politics, but it's above politics. Mm -hmm. It's like human rights and nature rights. By this moment, are only few small rural communities that are without water, so it's kind of easier to keep that out of public view 
but soon big cities are going to start being without water and that is going to be a huge problem.